Join us for this journey from New Zealand's stunning South Island to the more populated North Island by ferry. You'll enjoy tons of onboard amenities, peek inside the premium lounge on board, and best of all, you'll see a place like no other on earth on this three-hour tour. Hello, Jet Setters. Join us as we take a ferry from here in New Zealand's Marlborough Wine Region up to New Zealand's bustling capital on the North Island. We'll leave Blenheim and travel 30 minutes up to Picton by bus. From there, we'll board the Inter-Islander Ferry for its 58-mile journey. It'll take us just over three hours to reach Wellington. Our bus was scheduled to leave from Blenheim at 11.30, so we got to the bus stop at 11.10. Now, Suzanne was a bit more nervous about our ferry ride than I was. Apparently, the seas in the Cook Strait can be a bit rough. Now, this route is kind of known to have some rough weather and rough seas at times, so I'm just checking the swell forecast today. It's looking pretty good. Um, swells up to about one to two meters only. Hopefully, one to two meter swells are manageable. We booked our bus tickets separately from our ferry tickets, and as departure time came and went, we got worried as each passing bus failed to stop. The bus was due here about 20 minutes ago, and uh, there's no sign. I absolutely hate being late, but the good news is we've got some buffer time in Picton before the ferry leaves, so we should still be okay. Uh, it's just this frustration of waiting. Keep your fingers crossed. Finally, exactly 30 minutes late. That's it, just over there. The ride was easy enough. We had no intermediate stops and were in Picton at the ferry port only 30 minutes after we left Blenheim. We checked our bags and then found a place to check out the ferry. We booked tickets with access to the Inner Islander Plus Lounge, which is located on Deck 7. We did that because we think there's a little extras available to us in that class of service. We really don't know what to expect. We love trips like this where there are surprises built in for you and for us. Booking was extremely easy on the website, which is linked below. Once you select your date, you'll have a range of base ticket options depending on how flexible you want to be. From there, you can select extras like bringing a bike, a kayak, or even getting access to various lounges on board, even private cabins. Prices, of course, vary depending on dates. Inside the ferry terminal, there was plenty of seating but limited views. Our journey today would be on board Kaitaki. Launched in 1995, it's the oldest and largest of the four ferries in the fleet. About an hour before departure, an announcement was made and boarding for pedestrian passengers began. We walked along a gangway and were then in the parking area of the ship. We made our way upstairs and were immediately overwhelmed by how much there was to do on this ship. Level 2 had a cinema and a kid's playground, which we missed. Levels 3, 4, and 5 were for vehicles. On level seven, well, there's a nursery, a, a cafe, two lounges, including the premium lounge, which we could access. More on that later. On level eight, we found even more lounges, a gift shop, and two more restaurants. This ferry is massive. It just keeps going. There's still two more floors. Deck nine is just nothing but uh, cabins. And up on level 10, well, that's the viewing deck, which is open depending on weather, and we lucked out. But our first stop would be the Kaitaki Plus Lounge. The lounge was in a secluded part of the ship and included Wi-Fi, food, and a full bar. A complete buffet was available even before we left the dock. Access to this lounge cost an extra 80 New Zealand dollars over the base fare. As always, check the operator's website for the most current pricing and schedule information. I'll link it below. But don't think you have to book the lounge to have a great time on this ship. There are plenty of spaces everyone on board can access. And that's good, because Kaitaki can carry up to 1,400 passengers. Sure, Deck 10 is pretty incredible with its sweeping views. It's a fantastic place to hang out on days like this when the weather's great, but ultimately, we decided to head back down to the open area on Deck 7. 
This is incredible, and we haven't even left yet. We found a great perch to watch the cars roll onto the ferry. What an operation this was. This outdoor deck on level seven is pretty amazing and, and just, I think, almost as good as the one up on 10. Uh, there's not much of a forward view up there, so I think we'll hang out down here. But for now, while we wait to set off, we're gonna head back to the lounge. The lounge was great. The seating and tables were comfortable. There were plenty of plugs, but the Wi-Fi was limited and a bit slow. But with the views we're about to encounter, who needs Wi-Fi? Oh, and the food was way more substantial than we'd expected. We thought we might get a few snacks, but this was a complete lunch. This food is so good. Or should I say was. But it's time to pull away from Picton and start our way to Wellington. Our three hour trip starts with a bang as we leave Queen Charlotte Sound. We decided to head back down to deck seven, which offered views nearly as good as those on the top deck, but with a bit more protection from the wind. Not to mention, much better views of the back of the ship. Queen Charlotte Sound is the easternmost of the Marlboro Sounds, and thanks to the Tory Channel, Inner Island ferries, like this one, use this as the main access to Picton. Now, this ferry service is owned and operated by Kiwi Rail, the same operators of the train we'd taken from Greymouth a couple of days before. The current fleet of ferries will be replaced soon by larger, newer ones that will even be able to carry the railroad cars. The first hour of this trip is breathtaking at every turn as this massive ship made its way out of Queen Charlotte Sound. You'll definitely want to be outside for this part. The swell inside the sound was virtually non-existent, but what would happen when we passed out into the open ocean, the Cook Strait? Well, we were about to find out. Welcome to the Cook Strait. The seas were noticeably more rough than inside the sound, but according to the crew, this was nothing compared to what they can experience out here. Even still, we decided to head back to our seats in a lounge. I found the gentle rocking of the vessel to be relaxing. Meanwhile, here in the lounge, the crew had set out afternoon tea and dessert. Upstairs in the bar, a band was playing sea shanties. The myriad restaurants on board were keeping everyone well fed. Even the shop was doing a lively business, but we couldn't take our eyes off the views. And about an hour and a half after entering it, we were out of the Cook Strait. We're in Wellington Harbor. Should be hopping off here in no time at all. That plane is going to Blenheim. It takes about 15 minutes. A little faster than our trip. But that Dash 8 does not have any of the amenities of this massive ship. So as Wellington comes into view, let's rate the experience with a gem score. We'll unscientifically rate the lounge, the seat, the food, the entertainment, and the service. First, the lounge was a real highlight. At 80 New Zealand dollars on top of the ticket, it was pretty steep, but getting lunch and a full bar, not to mention a safe place to leave our things, was worth it to us. Five stars here. Second, the seats were all comfortable and there were plenty of them, but there wasn't anything too remarkable with them. Three stars here. The food was way more than we'd expected. It was all tasty, and although we didn't try all the restaurants, we're going with four stars. Now, the entertainment was impressive. Not only was there a band playing, but there was an, even a movie showing at Top Gun. 
five stars here. The service was subdued. Everyone we encountered was friendly and happy to be on board and to work with us, but there wasn't much proactive service we encountered. Four stars here. Would we travel on board the Inner Islander again? <laughs> you bet. All told, that's 21 out of 25 stars for the Inter Islander Ferry Service from Picton to Wellington on board Kaitaki. Between now and the next time, see you on the seas. <laughs> they're, they're loading the cars right here. So what do you think of Wellington? Looks like a bustling, a bustling yeah. capital city. Uh, the scenery was great, uh, but I'm not really a boat person. Let's get back in the air. <laughs>